Got some past exam questions here on year 12 reaction rates. So as always, the link to the questions is in the description for the video. Okay, so the first question, we've got to calculate the maximum volume of carbon monoxide measured at RTP, room temperature and pressure, that could be produced by heating this mixture of zinc and calcium carbonate. So you'll notice I've highlighted there the mass of zinc and the mass of calcium carbonate. So because we've got the mass of both reactants, we need to establish the limiting reagent and then obviously that's going to limit how much carbon monoxide is made off the reaction. So the moles of zinc, mass over MR, that number there. Likewise, calcium carbonate, that number there. So you can see that the calcium carbonate's the lower moles, it's the limiting reagent. So the moles of carbon monoxide will be the same as the moles of calcium carbonate from the ratio, it's all one to one. So multiply by 24, will get us the volume of um, carbon monoxide in decimeters cubed. And then if we multiply by a thousand, we get it into centimeters cubed. So it was 91.1. .1. Student didn't get the volume of gas predicted in the first part using the procedure. Apart from further repeats, suggest two improvements to the practical procedure. Well, it does say in the um, information that the student heated for two minutes, Maybe that's not long enough, so heat for longer than two minutes would be my sort of first choice um, answer. You could continue to heat until the syringe stops moving. You could use a larger mass of chemicals and that reduces the percentage error. Less obvious, something like this, wait for the gas to cool before measuring. Okay, so the next one, we've got to draw this graph from this data. So if I just move that there so you can see everything. So the examiner is going to be looking for the axes being labelled correctly. Obviously, don't forget your units. The points plotted correctly and the curve, the best fit curve through those points. So you can see there's an obvious outlier there, so you'd need to miss that one out. So something like that would be fine. And then you can see I've already kind of done the workings out on the graph, but I'll just go to the question. Use the graph to determine the rate of reaction after 50 seconds. So you can see I've marked up on the graph where 50 seconds is. I've drawn a tangent to the curve and then I've just calculated the gradient by working out the change in Y and dividing that by the change in X. So I got 0.625. Now whenever, the, whenever you've got to draw a tangent to a curve, there's always a range allowed for the gradient. So as long as you're within that range there, that was what was quoted on the mark scheme, you'd be fine. What you mustn't do, and it's a sort of classic mistake I see when a student's asked to calculate rate from a graph like this, they basically just read off the, the volume at the time and then divide the two. Okay, so that's obviously not what you do. It's the gradient of the tangent of the curve at that point. Which statement explains why rate of reaction increases when temperature is increased? Activation energy doesn't change when you change the temperature. It's only a catalyst that changes activation energy, so the first two are wrong. The proportion of molecules exceeding the activation energy goes down, decreases. Well, that's got to, got to be wrong. So it's got to be D. The proportion of molecules exceeding the activation energy increases. Yep, that's right. Next question, we've got to draw a labelled Boltzmann curve, and we've got to use it to explain how a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. So again, got to get our labels correct. So a number of molecules, y-axis, energy, x-axis. The curve must start at the origin. So the examiner will be looking there. It's got to start at the origin because no particles have zero energy. It takes that profile, but what you've got to make sure, and they're going to be looking there as well, your curve mustn't touch the x-axis. So you've got to sort of flatten it off. Asymptote is the word. It's got an asymptote here. Okay, so it must not look like it's going to hit that x-axis. The reason for that, I'll just may as well quickly explain. If you cut the x-axis, what you're saying is that's the absolute maximum energy a particle can have. And this, you're ruling out the chance that one single particle could have slightly more energy than that where you've cut the axis. So that's why you mustn't do that. The other labels to look, be looking for would be the activation energy without the catalyst and then a line to the left of that labelled up as the activation energy with the catalyst. So in words, 
I'm saying something like this. The catalyst provides an alternative route for the reaction with a lower activation energy. So I'm getting the definition of a catalyst in there. And the curve shows that the with the catalyst, the area under the curve after the activation energy, so with the catalyst, the area under the curve with the activation energy or higher is that, is greater than the area under the curve without the catalyst. So what that's telling us is there's more particles with sufficient energy to leave a reaction with the catalyst because of that bigger area compared to without the catalyst. So the curve shows that with the catalyst, the area under the curve after the activation energy is greater. So more particles have the required energy to react, therefore more effective collisions per second, something like that. And the last question, not really rates of reactions, um, percentage yield, this one, obviously. So calculate the percentage yield of hydrogen from this reaction, giving your answer to three significant figures. And we've got the ton conversion next. The masses are given in tons. So first thing we'll work out is the moles of methane used in a typical day. So mass over MR, there's your conversion there. So that's 200 million grams. So it's that many moles. So look at the ratio. Theoretically, we should get three times as many moles of hydrogen produced. So that number there. And then we're going to take that, that um, actual tonnage of uh, hydrogen to work out how many moles of hydrogen would typically be produced. Mass over MR, not many. So the percentage yield is the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 191.2.